Good morning, good morning. Welcome to today's coffee chat. Mm. Well, today what I have on my mind is Game Changers, the Netflix documentary. But before I get into that, I want to say welcome. If you're new to my channel, great to have you here. If you're returning after many times of visiting, great to have you back. If you are new here, what I share with you is what you need to know in order to make healthy eating habits actually stick. So things like the science of nutrition, the psychology of our food choices, as well as behavior hacks, things you need to do in order to create those habits that will actually stick. So if that sounds like that's for you, I encourage you to click the subscribe button and the little notification bell so that you never miss an opportunity to get in on my 24 years of nutrition experience. Okay, so Game Changers, the, the Netflix documentary around veganism, it's been out for a number of months now, and I know that I wanted to share the information with you because you're probably wondering what my thoughts are on it because I'm getting questions from clients almost every single day about it, so thought I would share that with you. Before I get into my analysis of the Game Changers documentary, I want to let you know kind of the, the lens of which that I'm using to look at it through or uh, you know where what my perspective is before I even pressed play for the documentary because I think that's important for you to know where I'm coming from. So I do have the 24 years of nutrition experience. I'm a dietitian, and I do work in the areas of sports nutrition as well as working to support other high performers, people who are busy in life and, you know, want to get a lot done, hold themselves to a high standard. I also have been interested in supporting people who are vegan since the 90s. So veganism is not something new to me. In fact, I have been a content editor for two vegan books. And when I wrote my cookbook, it, the publisher did want it to be omnivorous. But I, if you will notice, I highly skewed it towards vegetarian and veganism. It is, the biggest chapter in there is the vegetarian and vegan entrees. And if you look at all of the other chapters, the breakfast, the lunch, the snacks, etc., they are heavily skewed towards vegetarian and veganism. And by vegetarianism, and I don't just mean oh put a little cheese on that and that's every recipe no <laughs> true vegan recipes a lot of them in there and so because to tell the truth I um, am eat heavily plant-based I'm not vegan myself uh, that's cow's milk in my coffee that I'm sipping on this morning uh, but I would say I'm about like 70% vegan if I look at uh, the way I eat as a whole. Of course, when I'm doing cookbook reviews for you, I always include some meat and poultry and seafood recipes, and I do enjoy eggs. Uh, but yes, when I look at you know the way I eat day in, day out, heavily skewed towards veganism, although not a vegan. So that is the perspective I'm coming from. Veganism, nothing new for me. Uh, and as I said, sports nutrition and other high performers as well so yeah lots of men lots of women uh, clients so that's the perspective I'm bringing when I'm coming to press play to watch Game Changers my thoughts on the Game Changers documentary itself well first of all oof, absolutely kudos where kudos are due amazing production which you know quite honestly I'm not expecting anything less from a Netflix documentary. I mean, the the story arc, the editing, the music. I mean, I'm glad that I was looking at it with an analytical hat on taking my notes because I was getting swept up in it. And I think particularly if you're watching that, it was it's very easy and it's well done to get emotionally engaged and intellectually engaged in in the documentary and to come out being like, "Wow, you know, like I I bought into that. Absolutely. You know, that's that's their job and very, very well done. And if you think about, OK, say someone came to you and said, OK, we want to get men interested in something. 
like what are all the stereotypes you can pull out? What are men interested in? What are those stereotypes? Hmm, sports. Men like sports. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and particularly high caliber athletes, right? Like the best of the best in sports. Yeah, winning, winning. Yeah, men like winning. Uh, fighting. Men like fighting and military and particularly like elite military and elite fighting crews and techniques. Yeah, like how about the person who teaches like the elite crews? Yeah, they love, men love that. Yeah, what else do men love? Uh, men love protecting. Yeah, so let's get some people with guns who are being the protectors in, in something. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, men love toughness. Yeah, men love toughness. Oh, they also like, you know, hot women. So we got to get a little sprinkling of hot women in there. What else do men like? Ah, men like sex and their penises and testosterone. Yeah, yeah, men like that. And then, oh, so what if, you know, we need to talk about like a health concern? You know, men don't care about health. So so what would we, you know, use? What would we do to engage men in the idea of like heart health stuff? Like, oh, I know, firefighters. Let's get firefighters involved. Yeah, yeah, men love firefighters. Oh, I mean, I mean, of course I'm being facetious, those are all complete stereotypes. I am not trying to send, say that that's all that men enjoy, of course. But you notice that every single one of those stereotypes are throughout this documentary. I mean, they are pulling out all the stops with all of the stereotypes here. So, you know, I got to give it to them. They pulled all those stereotypes out and used them for this topic of veganism. And I have to say, you know, that's what, you know, as I said, I've been involved in supporting people who are vegan since the 90s. You know, they were talking about this being like a game changer. <sighs> I don't know that they were like groundbreaking and game changing around the evidence for veganism. That is not new. I've been doing it for, thir you know, 30 years. Um, but what I think they were changing the game in, what they, you know, were groundbreaking in was bringing the concept of veganism to like the manly men, <laughs> the topics of health, of caring for the environment, you know, these have been kind of stereotypical, like girly, like skinny type of things. And they were busting through that. So that absolutely can, you know, kudos to that for being a game changer around that, you know. So that, you know, kind of production, kind of the, the tools and techniques that they use to engage the audience, that's what I have to give them absolute credit for. Nutrition messages, getting into what my area of expertise is, is the nutrition messages. There were things I liked, things I have concerns around. So let's start with the good stuff, the, the things that I liked nutritionally that they brought up. I love that they bust the myth that one needs to eat animals in order to get protein. Absolutely not true. Super happy that they were talking about how there are many ways through plant-based foods that we can meet our nutrition needs and our needs for protein. So loved that. Uh, and I'm just going to look at my notes here because I want to make sure that I kept, hit all of the points here so that you have this thorough review. Okay, protein. I also really like that they had such a heavy emphasis on recovery, recovery in sports nutrition, uh, because that we do need to make sure we maximize recovery so that we can train at our maximum the next time. And when you're training at your maximum the next time, and then you maximally recover, and then the next day you can train at your maximum, you're going to have each of those tiny little incremental increases in your ability to train, and that's going to lead to overall better performance. So I love that they had this awesome emphasis on recovery and that they talked about to recover muscles, we need both the protein, the amino acids to rebuild, but also particularly for a more endurance, more cardiovascular type of athletes, we need to be restoring those glycogen stores in the muscles and that requires carbohydrates. And I really like that they were not shy about talking about the benefits of carbohydrates because carbs have been getting a lot of bad rap lately in kind of popular nutrition jargon. And so I was really happy to hear about the benefits of carbohydrates for particularly the athlete populations. 
And I like that they also did break down the difference between, you know, sugars and highly processed carbs versus the, the real whole grains or the, the more whole food carbohydrates. So I love that they were talking about that. I also really like that they did bring up the, the issue of B12 and they talked about the need to supplement that or use a food that has been fortified added but B12 to it because that is something that is not found um, in a vegan diet without being fortified or supplemented. So really happy that they touched um, on that one. Oh, I really like that they emphasize the role of vegetables in sports nutrition. I have said for many years, and if people are, you know, have come to hear me speak in person, I always bring this up in a sports nutrition related talk, that the biggest blind spot to me, and I've always been scratching my head around this, is the importance of vegetables when we're doing training, when we're doing sports. We're doing a lot of oxidative damage as we're breathing so heavily and bringing so much oxygen into the body and exchanging it, which we're doing on purpose when we're training, but that does create a lot of oxidative damage in our body. And so we want to be putting in our bodies their antioxidant superpowers to not to repair any damage that's happening. And our super anti and our antioxidant superpowers are vegetables. So love that they were really talking up the value of vegetables for sports nutrition. Oh, I was cheering when they were talking about that. I also love that they dispelled the myth that eating plant-based does not have good taste. They were talking about how delicious the foods are. And I mean, that is great because we eat with our taste buds, right? They give something tastes disgusting, we're not going to eat that. And so I really love, and I, you know, when I'm talking about eating vegetables, when I'm talking about healthy eating, a lot of times the grumbling people, you know, the, the grumbles in their head are like, oh, it's going to taste disgusting. And so I'm really glad that they were emphasizing how uh, not true, healthy eating, you know, the eating plant-based definitely is delicious. So love that they address that one. And then I also like that they did talk about, you know, considering the environmental impact of our food choices, because I think we do need to consider the environmental impact of our food choices. And so they, they brought up that issue and, and were addressing that. So I was really happy that they, they did that. Okay. Those were all the things that the nutrition content, the nutrition points that I really appreciated and I loved they were talking about in the movie. Talking about the negative side of things. I'm going to need a little sip before we get into this. Okay, so the first thing that I really did not appreciate is the, oh, they were just going on and on and having so much airtime and emphasis on these tiny little studies. Right, like three people in a study does not tell you anything, whether it was the Miami Dolphins, whether it was the overnight situations. <sighs> three people studies tell us nothing. And so, yeah, we, mm, there was a lot of kind of questionable science happening and overemphasis on things, you know, whether it was the gladiator stuff, whether it was a lot of these emphasis on these tiny little studies. Uh, I practice evidence-informed and evidence-based nutrition and yeah, some of the evidence they were pulling out uh, was not positive. And there is good science around some of these topics. And so I wish they were talking about some of the, the stronger studies and not going on and on and on with these like three people in the room and oh, far too much on that. So way too much anecdotal emphasis in the movie overall. Uh, going on that, there was so much emphasis around you know, the dangers of eating even one single meal and the problems that that causes. <sighs> that kind of all or nothing thinking really gets in the way, as I've seen in my practice, of people adopting healthy eating habits that actually stick. In fact, being super, super rigid in your eating and only eating like absolutely the healthiest of the healthiest, the cleanest of the clean things, that's been termed orthorexia and identified as an eating disorder because it actually interferes with our enjoyment of eating and, and experiencing life. And so the, the emphasis that they were having on that really was kind of fueling that, like I can't eat a single meal that's even unhealthy because it's going to have negative effects on my body. 
<sighs> I mean, let's just be practical. If that were true, how successful would we have been as a species? If human beings had to eat 100% perfect every single time, we would not have survived very well as a species. So emphasizing that we have to be 100%, mm, I think it's a really dangerous message, quite frankly. When I'm working with clients and my high performers, like I'm talking about people who hold themselves to a high level, I follow the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. You know that you want your eating habits day in, day out, what you do in general to be healthy. Yes, but then there's absolutely room to eat foods just for pleasure, just to join in others and have community and share and a connection with other people. These things are healthy and important too. And by setting ourselves up that we can only do 100%, it's unhealthy. It's not, it's not helpful. And so I really oh, was just not happy about so much emphasis, you know, those little test tubes with the blood of like eating only one single meal. Oh my God, you know, not, not good. And um, I also want to, it's kind of a finer, kind of nitpicky point, but I want to bring it up because I am here in Canada and I know many of, uh, you know, you are in Canada as well, um, is that there are many similarities between the U.S. food supply and the Canadian food supply, but there are some differences as well. And of course, the Netflix documentary is based on a U.S. food system. So when they were talking about dairy, dairy is something that is, the Canadian dairy is different than American uh, dairy. And that's regarding the hormones. And so in the U.S., uh, conventional dairy does contain, do, do use uh, bovine growth hormone in the U.S. Uh, in Canada, bovine growth hormone is illegal. So our dairy does not have the hormone in it. So that is a point just in it's, it's kind of a fine tuning point. It's not something that's incorrect in the video, in the movie, because of course it is Netflix, it's US based. So it's absolutely factually true um, for, for the US, but here in Canada are for Canadian milk, uh, you know, we are seeing US milk come up here now, but, uh, but for the Canadian dairy, that, that is not true. For the, the really the a big, big, point though around nutrition that I thought uh, was not well done in this in this movie and I could really see danger from it is that there was really a lot of not a lot of talk about how well yes one absolutely can meet your nutrition needs by being vegan you gotta know what you're doing in order to do that and you know it was kind of subtly danced around and like really minor points in there um, but all of those athletes you know who are are vegan they're working with sports dietitians to make sure their their needs are being met right when they were looking at the teams in that in the, and working with the athletes it was kind of subtly mentioned but not like an overt message um, and so it could easily have been missed that yes you know, absolutely, these people are succeeding, they're meeting their nutrition needs, they're excelling at their sports, but they're not just doing it by randomly picking stuff with just a little bit of knowledge. They're working with an expert to make sure that they're meeting their their high level needs. Uh, and there was a point specifically when they were talking about the essential amino acids, the EAAs, and they had the sentence, and I'm gonna read it because I, I think I wrote it down exactly here. Um, but they were talking about how with the EAAs, as long as you had enough EAAs, it didn't matter what uh, the source was. And that's absolutely true that, yes, as long as you have adequate essential amino acids, the, the particular kind of amino acids from pro certain proteins, uh, it doesn't matter what the source is. But the thing here is, is that you need to make sure you have an adequate amount. And how do you know if you're getting an adequate amount? And if you're relying on just plant-based sources, it is more difficult to get that adequate amount. Impossible, absolutely not. It's totally possible, but you need to know what you're doing in order to hit them, hit those targets. And so, you know, it was a really minor point, but I was like, yes, ah, it's totally, I could see people being set up to be, okay, I watched one documentary, I'm moving to veganism and then start, you know, just being vegan the next day. I got to tell you that there's this, sent this saying that a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. And that's what I could really see here. 
one documentary, no matter how good a documentary is, one documentary does not give you enough information in order to switch to a vegan diet. You need to know more than that. And so that's what I felt the real negative possible consequence of this documentary was, is that it could totally set people up to be like, yes, I am going to be vegan starting tomorrow, switch over, maybe not meet their nutrition needs, create some, you know, whether it's just, uh, you know, actually some vitamin deficiencies, some, some malnutrition, or whether it's just going to have a negative impact on their performance, not necessarily health, but on their performance um, when they were wanting to switch it up to improve their performance in a sport. And I you know, would hate for somebody to, to draw that conclusion, to be all gung-ho from the amazing production, from you know, pulling out all those stereotypes, from getting emotionally invested and the good information that is in there and jump into action prematurely. So what I would recommend is if this has inspired you, which, hey, it's inspiring movie, is to follow up with getting that information so that you have the adequate knowledge before switching to being vegan. So a couple of ways to do that. One is to find a dietitian who is familiar with veganism and sports nutrition if you are an athlete and, and work with them to make sure you're meeting your nutrition needs. And that's what I've been so happy about is that many people have been reaching out to me um, as one such dietitian and have been working with me in order to switch over. Super happy that people have been having that rational reaction uh, to the documentary and following up. Super happy to support them. Uh, another option is to do some research on, on your own, some further research about what one needs to do in order to meet your needs as, as a vegan. And I do have a book recommendation for that. It's this one here, Becoming Vegan by Brenda Davis and Vicento Molina. And I do recommend the most recent edition and the comprehensive edition because you do need to know. And this is a great how to book, how to meet your needs as someone who is vegan. Uh, it's great. It is not a cookbook. Uh, you can get recipes once you get this, but this tells you what you need to get in, and then you can go find recipes in order to find recipes, like to what meals will get me to, to meet these needs. And I've reviewed a number of cookbooks recently that would be excellent cookbooks around that. I reviewed Oh She Glows recently, and I'll include a link to that cookbook review below, or Eat More Plants, I'll include a link to that one as well. Uh, that's a wonderful cookbook by fellow Canadian dietitian Desiree Nielsen. So the two great vegan cookbooks if you are looking to move in that direction, but a cookbook alone isn't going to give you the information you need to meet your to meet your nutrition needs by switching to a vegan diet something like this book will and I will also include a, a link below to uh, to this this book here um, it'll be an affiliate uh, Amazon link so if you follow on through that uh, then I get a little um, a little piece a little bit of payment from Amazon that way, or you can go to Amazon directly or pop down to your local bookstore and pick it up. But this is, is a great one, uh, as well as, as I said, I'll include the links to those cookbooks if you're looking for some recipe ideas. Okay, so that's those are my thoughts. That's my summary of what I was thinking as I was watching Game Changers on Netflix. If you like today's video, please let me know. Click the, the little thumbs up buttons below. Have a wonderful week. Have a great week. And I look forward to seeing you back here next Thursday morning.